Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another video and uh, for this uh, specific video I chose a topic um, that is something that I do a lot with my students, um, especially those who are uh, studying art uh, or who work in creative fields, who are art directors or graphic designers. Um, also, uh, for all of those who are preparing for TOEIC test, uh, TOEIC test is a Japanese-based test. Um, it is mostly done in, um, I think, in companies. Um, and, of course, the test has several stages, and one of those stages is analyzing uh, a photograph or an image. Uh, so, this topic is going to be about uh, how to analyze visual content uh, in English uh, for any purpose um, that that you you have in your um, studying or in your career. So there are uh, several different uh, types of visual content that you can analyze. Uh, the the ones that you usually get on TOEIC tests and the the uh, the visual content that is the um, how can I say, the, sim the most simple one, uh, is uh, just analyzing plain street photography or landscape photography. For those practices, I usually use um, databases from National Geographic or Shutterstock. Um, I sometimes use Flickr, um, or I just Google photography 2019, for example, and then um, I get a list of different photographs and I choose the ones that I think would be the, uh, the most suitable for that specific student. So you can do that yourself. You can um, just try to push yourself and, and analyze um, something in, in, as a practice. Then uh, we have a more complex visual content with, which is more abstract. So those are images that are uh, hyper-enlarged or just um, maybe some art uh, that is um, really kind of hard to, to explain. Then you need to uh, analyze it a little bit further. So for all of those who are studying um, this for, for TOEIC test or for different um, school assignments, this is something that you don't have to do. But if you're an art history student or if you're applying for a, um, you know, a master program or a PhD program in, uh, related to art, um, then this would be also a good practice for you. So in this video, I won't be doing uh, the analysis of the abstract paintings and uh, photographs. Okay, so I thought the best way would be to show you how I um, explain uh, the analysis of visual content. Um, so, for example, let's use this image. Since it is winter time, uh, I think this image is really appropriate for, uh, for the period. So, um, there are uh, several steps that you have to follow when analyzing uh, photography. So a lot of students who have limited vocabulary or who are studying English, who are beginners uh, or intermediate students, they would jump into analyzing details. So for example, when they see this image, they would say the houses are colorful, there's three people on the street um, walking, which is of course okay. There is, I mean, that that's something that you immediately see. But uh, if you want a higher score and if you want your listener to be impressed by your analysis, then I suggest that you start by uh, analyzing uh, or defining the image first. Let's say defining. So um, this image is first of all a landscape photography. Um, so what we see uh, is a small village on the uh, slopes of a mountain. Um, it is winter time. And it is probably the afternoon or the evening because uh, we see that the, the lights are um, on and uh, the image is really dark. So we can say um, that it is definitely an evening time. Um, so the next we can try to explain the atmosphere. So the atmosphere um, is very peaceful, right? Um, it's very quiet, it's very serene, 
um, we can see that there is uh, someone walking on the street. There is a one tall man with two kids, so we can say this is like a family walk. Um, he's walking on this one street that is lit. Um, and then we can go into further details. So there is a lot of snow um, around the houses. The houses are covered in snow. Uh, they're also colorful, so that may uh, be a clue that this is shot somewhere in the north of Europe or maybe Canada or maybe Russia. So you can try to kind of define the location uh, where the shot has been taken. Furthermore, uh, if you want to express your personal opinion, uh, this is the way to do it. So. Um, you can say, how does this image make you feel? So if you're somebody who likes winter, then you can say, oh, this reminds me of a village that I uh, used to spend my childhood in. Uh, I really love the snow because um, everything seems so clean and quiet and peaceful. and It reminds me of holidays. So you can kind of add your story into uh, the image a little bit. So, or you can say, um, I hope these kids are having a great time. They're probably going home to have some dinner. So these, uh, this image is very uh, still. So it's a shot uh, of a place and like I said, it's very, um, it, it's very quiet. It looks peaceful and quiet. But there are images that are in motion. So, um, that are very dynamic when somebody's, for example, running or there, or there is an animal or there are a few uh, characters that are uh, in play uh, in the image itself. There, uh, you have to put a little bit more effort to explain what are they doing. So focus on the action itself. So what is happening in the image? Then, of course, if you're, if you're somebody who works uh, in branding, for example, you have to know how to analyze commercials and um, visual content that has to do with uh, different advertisements. Um, if you are in government or in politics, you have to analyze political ads, uh, political visual content. So, uh, depending on your profession, uh, you should kind of apply this analysis into what's important for your job or your studies. Okay, so this is just a small glimpse into this huge topic about analyzing visual content that I personally uh, love to practice with my students. Uh, in the next video or in, uh, in the future videos, I will try to, to uh, analyze more uh, visual content um, of different kinds so that um, you get some help with it. Um, okay, that was all and see you in the next one.